Hi students, once again you are welcome to Angel Health Academy. Subject is Community Health Nursing and topic for the day is or for the session is Application of Nursing Theories in Community Health Nursing. So I would like to talk about many theories uh, or a number of theories can be applied in Community Health Nursing and one theory I would like to apply in Community Health Nursing. So let us move to the topic. The theory. What do you mean by theory? Theory is an idea or set of concepts. So it is a set of concepts or it is a set of ideas that is intended to explain the facts or events. So the purpose of uh, setting a number of ideas or concepts uh, that is to explain the facts, explain the events. For example, to explain the new knowledge in nursing field. So theory is an idea or set of concepts that is intended to explain the facts or events of certain phenomena. Then theory is a set of guiding principles. So it also act as a or it, they are the set of the certain guiding principles so, can be applied in community health nursing or in any other discipline that is useful for description, explanation, prediction and control of phenomena or events or facts. So that means theory is a set of guiding principles which is useful for description, describe the phenomena, explain the phenomena and predict the outcome of the phenomena and control the, the particular phenomena, the facts or events. So this is the meaning of what you mean by theory. Next is about nursing theories. Nursing theories are organized body of knowledge. So it is a well organized body of knowledge which is used to, as we are already said, to describe, to develop a new knowledge, to discriminate the available phenomena and knowledge in nursing and use present knowledge in nursing. So nursing theories are organized body of knowledge which is used to, which can be used to describe, develop, discriminate and use of the present knowledge in relation to nursing or nursing aspects. Then nursing theories provide a framework, a structure, a conceptual framework for nurses to develop new and validate knowledge, to develop new nursing knowledge and validate the current knowledge and to systematize the nursing actions. All nursing actions, nursing activities, nursing interventions can be implemented systematically by application of this nursing theories. So it provides a framework or structure or conceptual uh, model for the nurses to develop the new and validate knowledge and of course it helps to systematize the nursing actions or nursing implementations or nursing cares. There are many nursing theories can be applied in community health nursing. So whatever the theories you have already known could be or can be applied in the community health nursing. Let us discuss what are the different type of theories can be applied in community health nursing. The second part of the session is theories and models for community health nursing. So as I said there are many theories we can apply in community health nursing. Let us see what are the main theories and the models that could be applied or that can be applied in community health nursing. The first theory is Nightingale's theory of environment. That is Nightingale's environmental theory. So Florence Nightingale is the first nursing theorist introduced the nursing theory as environmental theory or theory of environment. The second theory is Oram's general theory of nursing. That is Dorothea Oram's general theory of nursing also can be applied in community health nursing as Oram's self-care theory conceptual framework. The third theory is Betty Newman's health system model or health care system model. This is a theory I am going to apply in this discussion or in this session. So third one is Betty Newman's health system model. The fourth one is Martha Rogers model of the science and unitary man. The next nursing theory can be applied in community health nursing is Rogers model of the science and unitary man. The fifth one is Penders health promotion model. So it is an another model can be applied in community that is health promotion model that is Nola Penders health promotion model. The name of the theorist is Nola Pender. So Penders health promotion model. The next important theory can be applied in community health nursing is Roy's adaptation model that is Sister Callista Roy. So the name of the theorist is Sister Callista Roy. So Roy's adaptation model. Then seventh one is Salmon White's construct for public health nursing. 
So Salman White's construct for public ethnosin is another theory. The name of the theorist is Mark Salman White. Then eighth one is Milio's framework for prevention. So Milio's framework of prevention is another theory that is uh, introduced by Nancy Milio. This can be applied in community health nursing as primary, secondary and the tertiary level. The ninth theory is Block and Jostens ethical theory of population focused nursing. So Daryl Block and Jostens introduced another theory in nursing that is ethical theory of population focused nursing. And this theory also can be applied in community health nursing. The tenth one is Kegel Health Belief Model. That is Health Belief Model introduced by Hochbaum, Rosenstock and Kegels. This also can be applied in community health nursing. The eleventh one is Canadian Model. Canadian Model also can be applied in community health nursing practice. And twelfth one is Others. So there are many other theories also can be applied in community health nursing like Epidemiological Model, Epidemiological Theories etc. Also can be applied in community health nursing. In short, these are the important theories we can apply in community health nursing. First one is Nightingale's theory of environment, Orem self-care model, Newman's healthcare system model, Roy's adaptation model, Roger's model of the science and the unitary man, Pender's health promotion model, then Milio's framework of prevention, Salman White's construct for public health nursing, then Block and Jostens ethical theory of population focused nursing, then 10th one is health belief model, 11th one is Canadian model and last one is others like epidemiological models etc. can be applied in community health nursing. Let us discuss in detail about the Betty Newman's health care system model and today I would like to apply this Betty Newman health care system model in community health nursing. When we go back to the history of the, this theory, the theorist name is Betty Newman. She was born in United States. She completed her uh, diploma in nursing, that is registered nursing, her diploma uh, 1947 and 1957 she completed her Bachelor of Science in Nursing, then 1966 MSc Nursing. Then later in 1972 she introduced her theory and uh, it was first published in Nursing Research as a model for teaching total person approach to patient problems. So it was a model for teaching total person approach to patient the various problems. Then in 1974 she refined this theory and published as a first edition as conceptual model for nursing practice in 1974 and in 1980 the second edition was published. In 1980 the second edition published. In 1985 she took a doctorate in uh, nursing that is PhD in uh, clinical psychology. Then later from 1989 onwards uh, Newman began to use the term uh, client rather than the patient. Thus she replaced the term the patient to uh, the client from 1989 onwards. Next is the general information of the theory. The nursing theory developed by Betty Newman is based on the person's relationship to stress. So individual relationship to his stress, different type of stress and his response towards the stress or reaction towards stress and uh, reconstitution factors that is nothing but the stability of the human being that are progressive in nature. So automatically the person will be progressed for the reconstitution or stabilization. Thus the Newman theories or Betty Newman theories based on the person's relationship to stress, its response towards the stress and the reconstitution. Newman model provides a comprehensive, holistic and system based approach for nursing that is total person approach to various client problems. So it is a total person approach to the different client problems. Thus the theory is a comprehensive, holistic and system based approach for the nursing. In short the general information to the theory is or uh, Betty Newman system model is Every individual or human being is surrounded by environment and it is influenced by various uh, impact of the stresses. There are many stresses in the environment uh, that will affect the human being. Uh, then human being may have a response towards the stress uh, as a reaction. So, or this reaction or this uh, the problems related to stress can be treated with the uh, application of prevention that is levels of prevention such as primary, secondary and tertiary for the reconstitutions or stabilization of a person as a normal human being. Thus, the theory focuses on the patient system's response or reactions to 
actual or potential environmental stressors. Thus, the person maintains the stability, that is the client system stability through application of primary, secondary and tertiary nursing prevention intervention. Thus, he may be able to reduce the different type of stressors. The focus of the theories are one is constant interaction, the constant interaction between a client or the patient to the environment. Then stress and the stress reduction. And the theory is primarily concerned with the effect on stress on the health of an individual or the client. The second uh, focus is the response or attention of the person or patient system or client system to actual or potential various environmental stressors. The third focus is use of primary, secondary and tertiary nursing prevention interventions for the retention, attainment and maintenance of the optimum or maximum client system wellness that is nothing but stability and the reconstitution of the client. Thus there are three main focuses that is constant interaction between the client and the environment, then uh, response and attention of the client system towards the actual and potential environment and last one is use of different primary, secondary and tertiary preventive measures for the stabilization or for the optimal client system wellness. Next is the major concept of the betty newman system model. There are mainly four concepts. First one is human being or the client system. Second is stressors. Third one is prevention applications of levels of prevention. And the last one or fourth one is maintaining the reconstitution or stabilization or stability of the client. So the major concepts of the theory includes a human being that is the client system, stressors, prevention and the reconstitution. Let us discuss in detail about the major concepts of betty newman system model. Now you can see the major concepts of betty newman system model. Here we have the one circle, big circle that is the client system and from the environment there are many stressors, interpersonal, intrapersonal, extrapersonal stressors. Then application of the preventive measure that is LOP, levels of prevention, primary, secondary and tertiary for the stabilization or reconstitution of the individual or the client system. The first concept is client system. Newman consider human being as a total person, as a client system and the person is a layered multi-dimensional being. So, a person is made up of with many layers and each layer of the human being or the client system is consists of five personal variables or subsystems. Let us see what are the five subsystems. That is first one is, you can see the first layer that is physiological, then second layer that is psychological, then third layer, the yellowish layer is sociocultural and uh, bluish layer that is a uh, spiritual and last uh, outer layer that is developmental. Let us see what is the meaning of this physiological, psychological, sociocultural, spiritual and developmental uh, subsystem or personal variables. The physiological personal variable refers to the physiochemical structure and functions of the body of a human being. So physiological and the chemical structure and the, its functions of the human body. Then psychological personal variable refers to the mental process and emotions of the human being. Mental process and the emotions. Socio-cultural personal variables includes or it refers to relationships and the social or cultural expectations and the activities of a human being. That is relationships and the socio-cultural expectations and the activities. Spiritual uh, personal variable refers to the influence of the spiritual beliefs or religious practices of a human being. Then uh, developmental uh, personal variables refers to those processes related to development over the lifespan. So a person may uh, develop uh, throughout the lifespan and uh, that make different changes that is called as developmental personal variables. So which refers to those process related to the development over the lifespan of a individual or human being. The client system in Newman theory is made up of four different structures. First one is basic structures or central core. Then second structure is line of resistance. Then third one is normal line of defense. And fourth structure is flexible line of defense. Thus the client system in Newman system model is made up of basic structure or central core. Then line of resistance that is LR or LOR. Normal line of defense that is NLD or NLOD. Then the flexible line of defense that is FLD or FLOD. Let us discuss in detail about the this structure of the client system in Newman system model. 
So the four important structure of the trained system of Newman model. First one is the central part is the central circle is the basic structure that is basic structure BSR central core and second is the surrounding there is a circles that is called the line of resistance LR or LOR. Then outer the line of resistance there is an another uh, circle that is called as normal line of defense so that is NLD and last uh, outer uh, dotted circle is called as flexible line of defense so that is FLD. Let us discuss in detail about these four important structures of the client system of Betty Newman model. The first structure is basic structure of central core. According to Newman the person the client has a core which consists of basic structure this basic structure is made up of basic survival factors or basic system energy resources that is common to all the species. So it is very common to all the species and all the species may have the basic survival factors and basic system energy resources. So central core or basic structure includes basic survival factors or basic system energy resources. So central core is the energy resources of the client. That is made up of or which includes a system variables such as normal temperature range of an individual, genetic structure of the individual, response pattern of the individual, strength and weakness of the subsystem parts of the individual such as hair color, physical strength of the individual, cognitive ability of the persons etc. Then the ego structure of the individual. This all comes under as a uh, the survival factors or basic system energy resources of the individual that will be common to the species of the same individuals. Thus, this basic structure or central core which is made up of survival factors or basic system energy resources are very necessary for the client for the survival. So, basic structure or central core, uh, central core is necessary for the survival of the individual or the client system. Then, the basic structure is surrounded by the uh, many concentric circles. You can see in this picture the uh, basic structure or central core is uh, surrounded by many concentric circles such as a line of resistance, line of defense, flexible line of defense, etc. So there are uh, many concentric circles which surround the basic structures. The second structure is the line of resistance. It is the series of concentric circles. You can see three dotted uh, series of concentric circles which surround the basic structure or immediately surround the immediately to the basic structure is called as line of resistance. So, a series of concentric circles that surround the basic structure. Their main function is they protect the basic structure. They represent the internal factors of a person. So, these concentric circles or line of resistance represent the internal factors such as uh, age, sex, uh, previous infection, uh, sociocultural factors, uh, previous hospitalization, etc. These factors help the person to defend against various stresses when the stresses invert the individual. So, the line of resistance help to defend against the various stresses. Thus, they attempt to stabilize the person or reconstitute the person in a normal wellness state. Thus, the line of resistance functions as the protection factor. So, this protection factor is activated when the stressors have penetrated the normal line of defense. So, when the stressors are inverted or penetrate the normal line of defense to the individual, then the protection factors will be activated as a reaction or response by symptomatology. The example is a mobilization and increase of the various uh, white blood cells in the body to fight against the infection when an agent enter into infectious agent enter into the human body and the activation of our immune system mechanism input output uh, etc towards an infection. So this is about the line of resistance and its uh, function. In this diagram you can see that stressors are penetrating the, to the normal line of defense then the line of resistance is activated and it reacts with various symptoms to overcome the stressors. Thus, if the line of resistance are effective in an individual, uh, you can see here, automatically the system or individual can reconstitute or stabilize. And if the line of resistance are not effective, it may result the energy loss from the uh, central core that may result either in illness or that may even lead to death. This is about the line of resistance according to Betty Newman system model. The next structure, third structure is normal line of defense. So, this normal line of defense represents the solid line. This is not a dotted line, it is a solid line that is surround the uh, line of resistance or it is outside the line of resistance. 
then it refers to the equilibrium state so normal line of defense is the equilibrium state or it is the adaptation state the client is already adapted from the experience or from the developmental factors so it refers to the equilibrium state or the adaptation state that a client has developed over time in the lifespan example system stability or the person's usual state of wellness so normal line of defense represent the usual uh, system stability or usual state of wellness of an individual that is the adaptation state he has adapted as he is developed over a time thus the normal uh, line of defense is the system stability or the person's usual state of wellness and it may be considered dynamic it may be flexible or it may change because it can expand or it can contract over time in response to coping or responding to the environmental stresses so this normal line of defense may be uh, or it may be dynamic or flexible because it can either it can expand or it can contract over the time depend upon the coping or responding to the environmental stresses the last structure of the client system is flexible line of defense fourth one is flexible line of defense you can see the outermost layer of the client system is called the flexible line of defense it represents a broken line it is not a complete line it is a broken line that is it act as a protective outer barrier outer covering or defense or mechanism that surround the normal uh, line of defense normal line of resistance and the basic structure so flexible line of defense represent a broken line which is around the uh, normal uh, line of defense line of resistance and basic structure it act as a protective outer barrier or mechanism from the invasion of many stresses from the environment so it protect the it act as a fence or outer barrier or a protective mechanism that surround the normal line of defense line of resistance and basic structure from the invasion of a penetration of many stresses from the environment then if the flexible line of defense fails to provide adequate protection to the normal line of defense this is a normal line of defense the line of resistance become activated so when the flexible line of defense fails to provide the adequate protection from the invasion of the stresses to the normal line of defense then the line of resistance become activated and it responds or react that means if the flexible line of defense cannot protect the person from the stresses from the environment the stresses can break through the normal line of defense so you can see this diagram here the stresses are penetrating into the or through the flexible line of defense then to the normal line of defense then it again entering into the inside of the client system thus if the flexible line of defense cannot protect the person from the stresses the stresses can break through or it can penetrate the normal line of defense then there will be reaction from the line of resistance so causing a reaction the reaction depends on the clients or persons line of resistance the strength of the line of resistance so there will be reaction when the stresses enter or penetrate through the uh, normal line of defense when the stresses penetrate through the normal line of defense into the client system the second major concept of the newman system model is the stresses let us discuss about the stresses the stresses are any environmental factors as you know or the forces that might penetrate or invert the flexible line of defense and potentially it may affect the normal line of defense thus it alter the system stability or person's stability when it alter the uh, person's or client stability that may result either a positive impact or negative impact or positive outcome or negative outcome the positive outcome will be the wellness and the negative outcome will be the illness actually the newman system model looks at the impact of many stresses on the health of the individual then he addresses many type of the stresses and its reaction to the stresses and finally the stability of the or reconstitution of the individual or the person or the client system according to newman system model the stresses can occur in any number at any time and in different form so in this theory betty newman is uh, discussed that stresses can occur in any number or at any time or in different forms mainly there are three forms of the stresses from the environment first one is intra personal stresses second one is interpersonal stresses and the last one is extra personal stresses let us see what are the difference between the intra inter and extra personal stresses 
ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఇస్ ఇండ్రా పర్సనల్ స్ట్రెస్సెస్ విచ్ ఒక్కర్ విత్ ఇన్ ఏ పర్సన్ ఆర్ విత్ ఇన్ ద ఇండివిజువల్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇస్ ఇమోషన్స్ అండ్ ఫీలింగ్స్ సచ్ ఎస్ పాస్ట్ లైఫ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ పెయిన్ ఎక్సెట్రా ఆల్ కమ్స్ అండర్ ఇండ్రా పర్సనల్ స్ట్రెస్సెస్ సో విచ్ ఒక్కర్ విత్ ఇన్ ద పర్సన్ ద నెక్స్ట్ స్ట్రెస్సెస్ ఆర్ ఇండర్ పర్సనల్ స్ట్రెస్సెస్ విచ్ ఒక్కర్ బిట్వీన్ ద ఇండివిజువల్స్ so the stressors occurs between the individuals are known as interpersonal stressors example is the role expectation of a person every person has to play certain roles in the life then any separation anxiety in the uh, between the individual or any uh, situation with the uh, meeting with unfamiliar personnel or the person etc all comes under interpersonal stressors the last one is or uh, third one is extra personal stressors which occur outside the individual or outside the person example any job related or financial related stressors or pressure then any new environment unfamiliar environment or situation and change of the daily routine of a person all comes under uh, extra personal stresses so these are the three important uh, or different forms of stresses according to the betty newman system model the third major concept of the betty newman system model is prevention so as per the newman's model prevention is the primary nursing interventions to uh, react against the stresses or to prevent the stresses invasion of the stresses as you know prevention means that is levels of prevention it includes a primary prevention secondary prevention and tertiary preventions so according to betty newman system model the primary secondary and tertiary prevention interventions can be applied through that person can attempt to or to restore or maintain its normal stability so the normal stability or reconstitution of the system so according to newman system model the primary nursing interventions includes three levels of preventions first one is primary preventions as you know that primary preventions occurs before the onset of disease or illness that is it occurs before the system react to a stressor so before the uh, client system or the person react towards the stressor we will apply the primary prevention which strengthen the person so primary prevention strengthen the person it strengthen the flexible line of defense of a client system which enable him or which help him to make better deal with the, the stresses so he can prevent the stresses before it uh, invade the flexible line and the normal line of defense then primary prevention includes health promotion which promote the health of the client and which maintain the normal stability or wellness of the client second one is secondary prevention so so as you know secondary prevention occur after the onset of the disease that means it occurs the after the system or person react to the stresses so the secondary prevention occur after the system or client or the person react towards the stresses when it is inward to the flexible line of defense and the normal line of defense so the main focus of secondary prevention is to preventing the damage to the central core or basic structure of the client system it is done by strengthening the internal lines of resistance the secondary prevention measures are implemented for the strengthening of the internal line of resistance or to remove the stresses to entering into the normal line of defense so third one is tertiary prevention so tertiary prevention is usually implemented or it occurs after the a uh, client or the person or the system has been treated through the secondary prevention strategies so once the reaction has been occurred towards the stresses then secondary preventive measures applied then later after that tertiary preventive measures applied tertiary prevention usually offer the support to the client or the person or the individual and it also attempts to add energy to the system or to reduce the energy needed in order to facilitate or in order to make the reconstitution or stability or the normal well being state of an individual or the client so tertiary prevention support the patient or the client system and it helps to add energy or to reduce the energy which is needed for the uh, normal reconstitution or stability of the person or normal wellness state of the person the fourth major concept is reconstitution reconstitution is nothing but it is the increase in energy that occurs in relation to the degree of reaction towards the stresses or to the stresses what do you mean by degree of reaction it is the amount of system instability degree of reaction is nothing but it is the amount of system instability or the client or persons instability actually it is result from the stressor inversion of the normal line of defense when the stressors inverted to the normal line of defense if the system is having instability the amount of that instability will be depend upon the degree of the reaction 
reconstitution or stabilization usually begins at any point following the initiation of starting of the treatment that is levels of prevention for the invention of various stresses. So, usually reconstitution begins at any point after the initiation of the treatment that is implementation of the levels of prevention, so primary, secondary and tertiary for the invention of various stresses. Thus, the reconstitution stabilizes or it returns to the system to the normal level of well-being that is existed before the illness state. That is called as system integrity. That means reconstitution will lead to stabilization or stability of the individual or the client. Then that is lead to the final step that is system integrity or the state of well-being of a person or wellness. So, in short, reconstitution is the return and maintenance of the system stability. That is, return and maintenance of the person or individual stability after the treatment for the stresses, reactions or response, which may result in either higher or lower level of wellness of the person or the client. Now, let us see what is the meaning of stability. Stability is a state of balance of harmony that is requiring energy exchanges. So, it is a balance of harmony which requires the energy exchanges as the client adequately cope up with the stresses to retain, attain or maintain an optimal level of health or well-being, thus preserving the normal system integrity of the client. Then, wellness and illness. According to Newman, wellness is the condition in which all system parts and subparts are function in harmony with the whole system of the client. Then, illness is the state of insufficiency. It is a state of insufficiency with the disrupting needs of unsatisfied. When the person unable to cope up with the stresses, various stresses, that may lead to a state of insufficiency that is called the illness. Now, let us discuss with the diagrammatic representation of the betty newman system model. It consists of four major concepts. First one is client system, second one is the stressors and third one is preventive measures, prevention and fourth one is reconstitution. In the client system, you can see that basic structure and the center core, line of resistance, normal line of defense and the flexible line of defense. Then uh, in the stresses from the environment, that is intrapersonal, interpersonal and extrapersonal, which invert the flexible line of defense and even normal line of defense. When it is inverted into the normal line of defense, then person will, the client will react. The response is lead to reactions. Then application of prevention, primary preventions will be applied to the, uh, to prevent the invasion of the stresses that is to the flexible line of defense. Then after the reaction, the secondary preventive measures applied to the uh, line of resistance to strengthen the line of resistance. After the secondary prevention, tertiary preventive measures are support for the reconstitution or stabilization of the person that is in the normal well-being state. This is about the diagrammatic representation of the betty newman system model. The next is nursing meta paradigm. Meta paradigm is a set of concepts or proposition that sets forth the phenomena with which a discipline is concerned. So, it is nothing but it is most general statement of a discipline or a profession and it actually function as a framework. So, meta paradigm is the most general statement of a discipline. So, it is the most general statement of the discipline and it function as a framework, conceptual framework. It function as a framework in which the more restricted or difficult structures or information of conceptual model we can develop. The four nursing meta paradigms are person, environment, health and nursing, person, environment, health and nursing. Let us discuss this nursing meta paradigm according to Newman system model. The first nursing paradigm is a person. According to Newman, human being is a total person or as the client system. And the person is layered multi-dimensional being. Each layer consists of five personal variables or subsystems such as physiological, psychological, sociocultural, spiritual and developmental personal variables. This we have already discussed in detail. The second nursing paradigm is environment. According to Newman or Newman considers environment as the totality of the internal and the external forces or factors which surround a person or the client system with which he or she interact at a given time. Then, According to Newman, environment may include internal environment, external environment and the created environment. Let us see what is the meaning of internal, external and created environment according to Newman concept. First is the internal environment. The internal environment means which is seen within the client system or it is seen inside the client system or the person. 
the external environment is nothing but it exists the outside the client system or outside the patient or the person and the last type is created environment so created environment is an environment that is created and developed unconsciously by the person or the client and it is a symbolic of system stability and wholeness or reconstitution of the person that means created environment is already naturally created or developed unconsciously by the person or the client system as he develops and it is the symbolic of his system stability the client stability or the client wholeness or the client reconstitutions then in short according to newman the environment forces includes intrapersonal interpersonal and extrapersonal stresses this we have already discussed the third nursing paradigm according to newman is the health newman consider health is equated with the wellness that means health is the condition in which all parts and sub parts those are the personal variables are in harmony with the whole of the client system or the persons so according to newman health is equated with wellness which is the condition in which all parts and sub parts of the human being are in harmony with the whole of the client or rest of the client then according to newman the client system moved towards wellness when more energy is available in the basic structure than it is needed then according to newman the illness or death means the client system moves towards illness and death when more energy is needed than it is available in the basic structure so this is the concept of health according to newman the fourth paradigm is nursing according to newman nursing is a unique profession that is concerned with the all of the variables which influence the response or reactions of the client or the person might have to a stressor newman consider nursing is a unique profession that is concerned with the or concerned with the, all of the variables or factors which influence the response or reactions a person might have to react with the stresses then newman also defines nursing as it is an action which assist the individual families and groups to maintain a maximum level of wellness so nursing is an action which assist the individuals families and groups to maintain an optimum or maximum level of wellness and the primary aim of the nursing is maintaining the stability or reconstitution of the patient or the client system through certain interventions nursing interventions such as levels of prevention to reduce the intra inter and extra personal stresses so according to newman the primary aim of the nursing is to maintain the stability or reconstitution of the client or person by application of various nursing interventions such as levels of prevention as we have already discussed the role of the nursing according to the newman is seen in terms of degree of reaction towards the or to the stresses and the use of or application of primary secondary and tertiary interventions towards the stresses then moreover according to newman a person is seen as a wall system a person is seen as a wall system and it is the task of nursing or it is the goal of nursing to address the wall person with the nursing process in newman system model nursing process consists of six steps they are first one is assessment second one is nursing diagnosis third one is goal setting goals fourth one is plan of action that is planning and fifth one is intervention or implementation and last one is evaluation so according to newman nursing process consists of six steps they are assessment nursing diagnosis goal planning or plan of action implementation and evaluation let us discuss one by one what you mean by nursing process according to newman so first is assessment assessment of the client system or assessment of the patient includes first is actual and potential stresses of the client second to assess the condition and strength of the basic structure and energy resources or central core of the client that is the condition and strength of the basic structure or central core and energy sources of the client then third one is to assess the strength of the lines of resistance fourth one is assess the degree of reaction and the potential for the reconstitution or stabilization so degree of reaction and the reconstitution and the stabilization potential fifth one is interaction between the patient and his or her environment so interaction between the patient and the environment then sixth assessment is life process and the coping factors of the client for the optimal wellness the life process and the coping factors of the client or the patient then seventh assessment includes the perceptual difference between the 
caregiver, the nurse and the patient. The perception difference between the caregiver and the patient. So, these are the seven different areas. After the assessment, the second step of nursing process is diagnosis. That is, make a nursing diagnosis by interpreting the data which are already collected. The data may include the health seeking behavior of the client or the patient, health seeking behavior or practices of the client, attitudes of the client towards the health practices or empty practices. Then activity intolerance of the client or the patient. Ineffective coping mechanism of the client and family, ineffective coping and ineffective thermoregulation etc. depends upon the uh, stressors. Then next is third step is setting a goal. The third step is to set a goal. The ultimate goal is to keep the client system stable that is normal wellness state. The client or patient has to be kept in normal wellness state or to maintain the system integrity or reconstitution. So the ultimate goal of the nursing process is to keep the client system stable that is in the state of normal wellness or system integrity. The fourth step is planning or plan of actions. From the goals a plan of action is created. So after setting the goals based on the goals a plan of action must be created. Plan of action should focus on the strengthening the line of defense and the line of resistance of the client. So, main aim is to strengthen the line of defense of the client system and to strengthen the line of resistance, the lines of resistance of the client system. Then after that, implementation. Fifth step of nursing process is implementation. That is the plan of action or interventions are implemented by using levels of prevention that is primary, secondary and tertiary preventions to maintain the system integrity or reconstitution. So the last or final step of nursing process is evaluation. So the nursing process is evaluated to determine whether the person has been restored the balance or not restored whether the person maintained the a stable state or reconstitution whether the system or the client maintained the system integrity or not these all the things will be evaluated as the end step of the nursing process and if not the nursing process will be continued with the reassessment for the modification of the action plan and the implementation this is about the concept of the nursing process according to betty newman the last session of the day is application of the Newman system model in community health nurse. An important session of the day that is application of the Newman system model in community health nursing. For the purpose of application in community setting, a family is selected and the head of the family is suffering from Delta variant of COVID-19. And we are going to apply Newman system model in community setting in this family. The objectives of the nursing process are first one is to assess the family health status the current health status of the family members including various stressors intra inter and extra stressors related to the problem the second objective is to identify the uh, various needs of the family members that is both the specific and the general needs of the family members the third objective is to demonstrate an effective communication and interaction with the family members. To demonstrate an effective communication and interaction with all the family members through psychological support and counseling. Last objective is to application of Newman theory that is nursing process with the levels of prevention to solve all the identified problems or stresses of the family members. The first step of the nursing process that is assessment. Assessment includes assess the client and his family health status. Assess the head of the family, its problem, its stresses and the total family health status. Then identify various stressors that is intrapersonal, interpersonal and extrapersonal stressors due to uh, Delta variant infection of COVID-19. Then third one is assess the intensity of the stressors. Then reactions towards the stressors, various reactions or response of the family members to the stressors. Then assess the level of fear and anxiety among the family members due to the problem. Assess the level of fear and anxiety. And last uh, step of assessment is obtain information about the family coping strategies. So identify the various family coping strategies towards the problem. So these are the assessment part of the nursing process. As we have already discussed, assess or identify the various stressors related to the problem. Intrapersonal stressors include fear and anxiety related to corona infection or delta variant of COVID-19 infection. Interpersonal stressors include sir, the pressures of the head of the family that is related to role expectation as the head of the family is suffering from 
delta variant COVID-19 infection is unable to do its own role expectation. Then third one is extra personal stresses that is related to the job stresses is um, unable to do the job that may lead to financial stresses is the only earning member of the family then the total family coping all comes under extra personal stresses so these are the three type of stresses can be assessed or identified during the nursing process then second step of nursing process is family diagnosis make the family nursing diagnosis based on the identified or data from the family members or health status of the family members that is making family diagnosis after making family diagnosis setting the goals third step is goals set the goals or outcomes of the nursing process and various objectives in relation to the goals based on the family nursing diagnosis the fourth step of nursing process is family health planning first is analyze the family nursing diagnosis once again analyze the family nursing diagnosis then prioritize the family nursing diagnosis or ranking the family nursing diagnosis then involve the family members in decision making or making plan of action and the implementation with the level supervision so involvement of the family members and last one is make different action plans in relation to level supervision primary secondary and the tertiary prevention then fifth step of nursing process that is implementation so apply the primary secondary and tertiary levels of prevention as per the plan of action so application of levels of prevention then after application documentation of all the activities as a part of implementation application of levels of prevention to reduce the stresses in relation to covid 19 first is primary prevention let us see what are the primary preventive measures so primary prevention action taken prior to the onset of the uh, diseases and uh, here it is prevented the spread of the infection from that of the family to other family members for that uh, health awareness and uh, health promotion that may help to reduce the fear and anxiety among the family members and it improve the family coping system so first step of primary prevention is health awareness and uh, health promotion the second step is maintaining social distancing at uh, home maintaining social distancing at uh, Home. The third measure of primary prevention is use of N95 masks by all the family members. Use of N95 masks. The fourth measure is use of sanitizer by the family members. The fifth measure of primary prevention is demonstration of proper hand washing techniques to the family members. Each family members so demonstration of proper hand washing techniques. Then the sixth measure of primary prevention is promotion of vaccination encourage the family member to have the booster dose that is three doses of vaccination and third dose of vaccination if already they have done the first two doses of vaccination that is booster dose of vaccination against the covid 19 infection the seventh measure is proper disposal of all the contaminated articles used by the head of the family proper disposal of contaminated articles so in short the primary prevention includes health awareness and health promotion to reduce the fear anxiety and thus improving the coping mechanism of the family members social distancing at home use of n95 masks by the family members use of sanitizer demonstration of proper hand washing technique and appreciate the third dose of vaccination for the covid 19 and last one is the proper disposal of contaminated articles used by the head of the family then application of levels of prevention to reduce the stresses in relation to covid 19 that is secondary preventive measures let us see what are the secondary preventive measures first one is screening of all the family members towards the delta variant covid 19 infection it can be tested as rt pcr or antigen test or it can be even tested uh, at home by my lab covi self test that is covi self kit is available so screening of all the family members then home isolation of the head of the family so isolation at home for seven days then it it can be even lead to 14 days or it can maximum extend to 30 days for the full protection that is home isolation third is complete treatment which includes fever management so daily record of the temperature then use of antipyretic that is six hourly that is four times a day uh, with the paracetamol tablet 650 milligrams then supportive treatment depends upon the symptom that if there is common cold levocetrizin that is one at night per day could be used by the family then if there is a sore throat that is gargling that is half glass warm water with the one teaspoon ginger and also periodically drinking of hot water also will help to reduce the sore throat then steam inhalation also could be done at home as a supportive 
treatment. Then taking protein rich food, it includes pulses and nuts, especially soya bean, green gram etc. could be taken as a protein rich food. Then adequate hydration, adequate safe drinking water, that is 1 liter per 25 kg. So for each 25 kg of body weight, there should be 1 liter of water. It restores the fluid and the electrolyte imbalance and it also helps to drain out the virus through the urine. The seventh measure is proper rest and leisure. That is can be extended up to 14 days and maximum for 30 days rest and leisure. Then the eighth measure for the secondary prevention that is sound sleep, adequate sleep for 7 to 9 hours. The adequate sleep of 7 to 9 hours enhance the removal of toxic products from the body. Thus, it provides the immunity and resistance to the family member or head of the family. So, in short, the secondary prevention means action taken after the onset of the disease to reduce the severity of the disease, thus to prevent the complication of the disease. There are mainly two interventions that is early detection and adequate treatment. So, secondary preventive measures includes the first one is screening of all the family members either by RT-PCR or antigen test, even COVID self home test kit. Then quarantine or isolation of the family head of the family at home for 7 days, then up to 14 days and maximum for 30 days. Then fever management with the paracetamol, supportive treatment according to the symptoms, protein rich food, adequate hydration or fluid, then proper rest and leisure, then sound sleep for 7 to 9 hours. Then other symptomatic treatment as per the advice of the healthcare personnel. These are the various secondary level measures. Then last step of levels of prevention that is tertiary prevention. The measures include sir, disability limitation and rehabilitation. So, the first measure of tertiary prevention is psychological support and counseling of the family members to reduce the fear, reduce the anxiety and improve the coping mechanism. So, psychological support and counseling, it also helps to disability limitation and rehabilitation. The second measure of tertiary prevention is mild exercise. So, mild to moderate exercise by the head of the family that is standing and sitting exercise for 10 times. So flexion and extension of the various joints of the extremities to reduce the muscle pain. Then third measure is respiratory exercise to prevent the complication of pneumonia. So breathing exercise. This also will enhance the disability limitation and the rehabilitation. The fourth measure is leisure and relaxation techniques. Use of various relaxation techniques for stress reduction such as listening music, watching movies, reading books or novels etc. These are the relaxation techniques to reduce the stresses during the period of infection. Then fifth measure is having immunity boosting diet. Consumption of more ginger and garlic in the diet, regular diet that may increase the taste of the food. It even increase the immunity power and it of course reduce the pain. Then sixth measure is last measure is healthy practices by the head of the family and family members. Uh, preventing uh, antimicrobial resistance and preventing uh, unnecessary intake of the antibiotics as it is a uh, viral disease, there is no need of any antibiotics unless there is a secondary bacterial infection. So, prevent the AMR that is antimicrobial resistance is the one of the healthy practices. Then check for reinfection. There is a chance for reinfection. Periodically check the chances of or screen for the reinfection. That also another healthy practices. Then follow the strict quarantine or isolation for minimum 7 days, then up to 10 days and maximum for 14 days or even for 30 days. Then healthy practices of having a prone position that is uh, to prevent the respiratory infection such as pneumonia, a prone position can be adopted by the client. That also is another healthy practices. In short, tertiary prevention includes psychological support and counseling, mild exercises, respiratory exercise to prevent pneumonia, leisure and relaxation techniques, immunity boosting diet and healthy practices. All general common healthy practices and positive concept towards the health and healthy practices. Then last step of nursing process is evaluation. That is the sixth step of nursing process is evaluation. So once again assess the family health status and stressors, whether it is relieved or not, whether it is reduced or not. Check whether the objectives and goals are achieved or not. If the objectives and goals are not completely met or if it is partially met, make a modified plan and continue the nursing process with the reassessment. Next is making a conceptual framework that is application of Newman system model with the nursing process with the current information. 
So this is a detailed conceptual framework or conceptual model of Newman system model with the application of nursing process to the family affected with the COVID-19. It includes the major concepts of the Newman's health system model that is client system, stressors, prevention and reconstitution. So, then we have to apply the nursing process. So uh, first one is assessment that is assessing the stressors of the head of the family and family members that is intrapersonal stressors such as fear and anxiety, interpersonal stressors such as role expectation as the head of the family suffering from the uh, Delta variant of COVID-19. Then extra personal stressors such as job stress, financial stress, family coping stress, etc. All this could be assessed during the first step of the nursing process that is assessment. Based on that, the second step family nursing diagnosis has to be uh, made. Then based on the nursing diagnosis, family diagnosis, the goal and the objectives has to be set. And based on the goals and objectives, action plans for family health planning has to be made with the levels of prevention. Then this LOP has to be implemented as a primary prevention, which includes health promotion and specific protection. Health promotion includes health awareness, social distancing, uh, use of N95 masks and use of sanitizer and washing techniques, etc. Then specific protection with the proper vaccination with the COVID shield, the co-vaccine, etc. Then implementation of primary prevention done before the onset of the uh, disease. Here the aim of the primary prevention is to prevent the spread of the infection to other family members. The primary preventive measures strengthen the flexible line of defense of the client system. Then uh, if the primary levels of prevention fails, uh, there would be a reaction or response from the uh, client then after that uh, secondary preventive measures will be applied that is early detection and uh, adequate treatment for the disease uh, with the home isolation and uh, adequate and uh, symptomatic treatment that will strengthen the line of resistance of the client system. The last preventive measure is tertiary prevention it includes a uh, disability limitation and uh, rehabilitation that includes uh, psychological support, counseling, mild exercises, respiratory exercises, rest and relaxation techniques etc for the rehabilitation process and disability limitation that support the reconstitution or stability or uh, the state of wellness of the client system. Then after implementation we go for the next process the last step of uh, nursing process that is evaluation through feedback uh, we can identify whether the goals are uh, achieved or not achieved. If it is not achieved, it has to be continued with the reassessment, diagnosis, goals, planning, implementation with various uh, modified measures of primary, secondary and tertiary prevention, then again evaluation. So it is a cycle, the nursing process has to be continued. So this is an in-depth and in-detailed application of Newman system model in a family affected with COVID-19 as a conceptual framework or conceptual model with the application of nursing process. So, so far we have discussed about the Bettinumann theory or Bettinumann system model and application of uh, Bettinumann theory in community health nursing. Hope this video really benefits in your studies. If you feel it is worth and benefit, please uh, uh, like, share and subscribe my channel and stay tuned with Angel Health Academy till we meet with another and important education video. Thank you.